Hello and welcome to the FormFusion introductory training. My name is Chris and I'll be leading the training today. The intended audience for this training is users that are new to FormFusion who will be modifying and designing FormFusion templates. This training is not required for users who will be running processes enhanced by FormFusion. The goal of this training is to demonstrate the basic functionality of the FormFusion application. We'll be covering the following objectives in the training. An overview of what FormFusion is and what it does. The support options that are available in FormFusion. How to manage FormFusion templates. And the different components that make up FormFusion. Okay, so first, let's do an overview of FormFusion. FormFusion is a document enhancement um, solution that gives complete control over the planning, design and distribution of documents. It transforms standard application output into more efficient, functional and attractive looking electronic documents. FormFusion can process anything from purchase orders to invoices. It can modify visual elements, rearrange and add additional information not included in the original source file and distribute your output. FormFusion is fully integrated with the, the Evisions Maps server and communicates with a variety of databases. It utilizes the na native Microsoft Windows printing mechanism, providing color printing, the Unicode character set, true type fonts, and access to a wide variety of printers. Let's look at the process of printing a document. When a typical job is run, the source system creates a file and calls a regular print command known as LP and prints the file. When a FormFusion job is run, the source system creates a file and calls a FormFusion print command known as EVILP, EVisionsLP or EVILP. The print command determines if the process called is a regular file or a FormFusion file. If the print command determines the process is not a FormFusion file, it will print the file normally. If the print command determines that the process is a FormFusion file, it will process the file with the details that have been specified in the FormFusion template. Let's discuss the launching and the navigation of FormFusion. Notice I have my web browser on my screen and I will enter the URL that I use to access the Evisions applications. Your Maps Administrator will provide this URL that is used at your institution. This URL can be saved and treated like any other website. This server is configured for HTTPS, so I need to sign in on this window. Depending on how your server is set up, you may be automatically sent to the product window page. First, we will want to select the product we're using, in this case, FormFusion. Um, as Google Chrome has disabled NPAPI support in uh, September of 2015, it will no longer be possible to use Java to launch Maps and the associated applications. In order to better support our users who prefer the Chrome browser, eVisions added the option to launch without Java using the eVisions application launcher and this was in Maps version 4.5. For more information on this feature, please refer to the Maps 4.5 release guide or open up a help desk ticket if you have any questions. Clicking on the power button will start my application. Because of how HTTPS works, I'm automatically signed into FormFusion when I click the start button. However, depending on your server configuration, you may need to sign into the application. I can disconnect by clicking the icon that looks like two computers linked together. And I can reconnect by clicking this again. This will now ask me for my credentials in the login window. Note the option to save username or save username and password. The, availabil uh, the availability of these options is configured by your administrator, so they may or may not be available to you. 
and click the login button. <laughs> click the login and button to log back in. Okay, that's not going to work for me. I'll just relaunch from here. I've obviously misplaced my password. The first thing we're going to do is review the navigation of FormFusion. <clears throat> At the bottom of the screen, we can see some information, including my username, the server name I'm connected to, and my connection status. Above that, we have the process log, and this will log all actions that have been performed in FormFusion since I logged in. Above that, the window is split into three sections. On the left, we have the process tree. In the middle is our My Variable Reference area. And on the right is my design area. The process tree and variable reference can be pinned or unpinned. When a menu is unpinned, it will automatically hide. At the top of the screen, we have our File, Edit, Tools and Help drop-down menus. And next is the Object Toolbar, where we can exit, copy, cut, paste, delete, Object Properties, Printing Preferences, Security, the Co-op User Community, Online Support, and In-Product Support. The next thing I'm going to cover are the support options that are available. The first support option I'm going to discuss is the in-product help. The in-product help includes specifics on how to use a feature in one of our products. You can access it at any time by clicking the icon or pressing F1 on your keyboard. There we go. The help in this menu is context sensitive, so the initial page uh, that is loaded depends on where you are in the product. From the main page, it brings up general help information. Another support option that is available is online support. To access that, I click the icon that looks like a wrench and a screwdriver. Here we see our main support page, which has links to different areas of support, including our knowledge base, documentation and software, the co-op user community, and also our help desk. We can access the, the FormFusion specific page by clicking product support, followed by FormFusion. This is the FormFusion main support page, which has support information specific to this application. Under training, This will take us to the available training services. We have uh, on-site training, online live, classroom training, which is currently specific to Argus, and online recorded training. All of our online trainings have been recorded and are available for download on the support site. Notice that at the top of the support page, there is also a link to our help desk. The help desk has a link to our knowledge base, which was launched in July of 2012 and is a good resource for resolving issues or errors. You can also view or submit help desk request, ticket requests. I'm going to go into the knowledge base and I could scroll down to the form fusion section and look for something that matches my issue. Or alternatively, I can enter a search. And this will return any articles if anything is found. We also have the co-op community, which has two sections, the share and the forums. In the forums, there is a forum for each of the Evisions applications. We would encourage you to visit this area to communicate and collaborate with our other clients. OK, so let's move into the share section and download a template to use in today's training. The share is where you can download FormFusion templates and to define our search, I will select FormFusion in the product dropdown and I can now type in the name of the template that I want to use for the training. 
I'm going to search for a purchase order. This returns all results that uh, match my search. Each template includes a description of what the, the item is, the system it was designed to work with, in this one, a Lucian banner, and the version of FormFusion it was designed for, in this case 3.0. Notice that under the PO template, there is a PDF attachment. There are PDF versions of many of our templates in the support site, and this can be useful because the PDF can be printed and used as the basis for your form stamp in FormFusion. I want to select this PO, designed for version 3.0, because that's the version I'm using. When you click download, depending on how your browser set is set up, it may automatically download. Now we're going to talk about template management. First we will review the creation process of a FormFusion template. There are seven steps to creating a basic template. There are also optional steps, but those are more advanced and will be discussed in the FormFusion advanced training. First we have environments. Environments are containers created by the administrator, defining the database connection and the default printer. Next, you would create a project folder in the process tree under one of the environments. You can also have folders within folders for better organization of your templates. As a best practice, folders should be used for organization. Next, we start creating the template by starting with a process. This is a process name that will be ran in your ERP system called by the print command. Within the process, a print parameter is created. Here we can select a number of copies, set up sorting, and add any special processing necessary for the template. For banner sites, the special print parameter corresponds to the special print box on the job submission form. The FormFusion print parameter is called upon by entering its name into the special print box. The first component created in a print parameter is the map form object. The map form is going to be where all the variables are mapped using the information for the input file. A sample input file is then imported into FormFusion to map the fields. This file could be any number of types including LIS, CSV or TXT. The text would then be mapped to variables using floating or offset fields. The next object created in the print parameter is a form stamp. The form stamp component follows a different naming schema and can be named differently than other objects. The form stamp is going to be where the final form is designed. The next object created in the print parameter is a form director. Form director is going to be where the finished form will be distributed. We also have the capture form component that allows us to print conditionally. This component will be covered in the advanced training. We now have a completed FormFusion template. Conveniently, when we download a template from the Avisions Co-op Share, the template will have all necessary components. Only minor changes should be needed. In the process tree, we can see my FormFusion environments. Within the environments, I have folders organizing my processes. If I right-click on an environment and select Properties, or use this icon in the toolbar, I can check my environment configuration. You can see which is the default environment, the associated ADO connection, and the default printer for each environment. The default environment is where a job will run um, if there is no environment specified. The associated ADO connection will be the one that uh, the connection that is used for queries and the default printer is what will be used to render the output if another printer is not specified.
processes are identified by the double gear icon. Any number of folders and processes can be created within each environment. A process contains the print parameters that are identified by a printer icon. Each process can have more than one print parameter. And again, the special print parameter is specified in the job submission form for banner clients under the special print field. The print parameter contains our components and data. I will be using this online training environment for today's training. And first I will want to import the template we just downloaded. To begin importing a template, I will right click on my folder and select import from file. And navigate to where the file is located and click open. Here we have our process, and this process contains two print parameters. This indicates to me that there are two different layouts for this process. Let's open each print parameter and see what they look like. I want to be able to see this entire form. I can do that by holding down control on my keyboard and using the scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in and out. And next I'll look at the second parameter. Notice that we now have some tabs at the top of the design area. For each open component, a new tab will appear. And notice that both of my form stamps are based on a similar um, input file. And yet they have very different layouts. The stamp associated with POB2 has some uh, terms and conditions or conditions of purchase at the top and some seller instructions at the bottom, whereas the one from POB1 has a ship to address at the top and a blank space at the bottom. For this training, I don't actually need this process, so I can demonstrate how to delete it. There are a couple of ways to do this. I can select the file and use the red X at the top. I can right click on the object and select delete. Or I can hit delete on my keyboard. This brings up the delete confirmation and I want to select yes to all. Otherwise I'll be asked to confirm the deletion of each component. Let's move on and discuss the components of FormFusion. We'll start with the properties for a print parameter. Here we can set the number of copies, sorting, and any special processing. Let's go back into FormFusion. And to access the print parameter properties, I can right click on the parameter and select properties. By default, the source file section is displayed. Here you can manually adjust the column and row count if necessary. The Copies section allows us to add and remove copies. We can also set duplex printing, whether the output will flip on the short edge, and page coalition. Under Imaging, we could load an image in that would later be pulled and used by an HTML object. Under Sorting, we can sort the report based on a variable that appears in our report. For example, sorting by zip code would allow you to take advantage of post office bulk mailing rates. In Special Processing, you can ignore pages that are blank and set instructions for specific pages. Some systems print a control report at the beginning or end of each job. Giving FormFusion special instructions can alleviate this issue. We also have the option to change the page size and the fonts of the print parameter. The first component within the print parameter that we're going to discuss is the form stamp. This is one of the most frequently used components of form fusion. A form stamp is where the design elements are added to the form, including your logo, 
the source file information, and anything else you want to print in the final form. Let's go to Form Fusion and take a look at Form Stamp. Here we have our main Form Stamp, PO Main. As discussed earlier, to zoom I can hold the control key and use the wheel on my mouse. I can also use this drop down menu. We'll want to make some adjustments to this template so it will accommodate our needs. And the first thing I'm going to change is the school name. To edit an object, I can double click it. And here we have the object properties and can make necessary changes. I'm just going to change this to Efficiency University Support. I could also change the font and the colour and size. Set some other editing options. <clears throat> you can also change the text angle. Selecting 180 would rotate the text to print upside down. And this could be useful if you're going to print through a fold and seal machine. Click OK will return me to my form. Next I'm going to change out the logo. Click my existing logo and hit delete on my keyboard. And to bring in a new image for the logo, I'll click the icon that looks like a picture. Click where I want the logo to go in my form. And this will bring up a load image window. You would navigate to the folder that contained your logo, select it and click open. I can now move the logo to be where I want it on the form. The next element I'm going to discuss is the use of a watermark. Watermarks make forms look much more professional and can be easily added. Let's remove the watermark I have. To add a new watermark, same as the logo, click on the picture icon and on my form. Select my watermark and click open. Move it into position. Uh, please note when resizing an image, such as this, Form Fusion will not preserve picture quality. It is recommended that a graphic software like Photoshop be used when resizing an image. I have my image in, but it is very dark for a watermark. To lighten the image, I can right click and select Adjust and Brightness Contrast. The Modify Brightness Contrast window will pop up. I could manually change the settings, but we also have this watermark setting that will automatically adjust. Now I want to place this behind my text, and to do this I can just right click and select Centre Back. Loading images onto form stamp could also be used to load in a signature, such as this one. Let's just delete the original. To add the signature, use the same icon and click on my form. Navigate to your image. Resize if necessary and move into position. And then I'm going to send this to back so the signature line appears. As well as dragging an image, you can hold down the control key and use the cursor arrows for precision movement. At this point, if the template met your needs, you would be able to start printing POs from your system. Typically some additional modifications will be desired and I'll demonstrate how to further customise this template. The next thing we're going to cover is how to add variables to the form. Notice that this page does not have a ship to address, so I'm going to add that. The first thing I want to add is a label. To add a label, I could click on the icon with an A on the grid to add a text object. Click on my form. The object properties pop up. Here I can enter my text and make changes to the properties as before. Along with a text object, there is also an RTF object, which allows for dynamic placement of text, and an HTML object, which allows for formatting in HTML.
Notice that the font and formatting doesn't match the rest of my labels. To make a label that matched, I could check the settings in one of the existing labels and configure this one the same. Another option would be to copy an existing label and paste. And I can just update the text. Now I'm going to reposition and I can use the blue alignment lines to make sure I get it in the correct place. Next we will add our data field from the variable reference area. To add the ship to address, I can simply drag and drop ship to address from variable reference and position it where I want in my form. <coughs> now I could change the font to match the rest of the document if I needed to. And next we are going to talk about alignment. Notice that my supplier address and my send billing invoice to address don't align. I want these to line up on the left hand side. To align these two objects I need to select them. I can select multiple objects by holding down the shift key and clicking the objects I need. The order of selection here does not matter because the address will align in reference to the object that is closest to the side being aligned to. Next I would select the left align from the object toolbar. After making changes to the form, you would want to save these changes by clicking on the floppy disk icon. The next topic we'll discuss is the use of multiple copies. We can use multiple form stamps to create multiple copies of a document depending on who is to receive it. An example would be in the PO where one copy is sent to a vendor and another is filed for your records. The vendor copy would print terms and conditions and the signature, and the file copy would print vendor specific information. Notice that I have three form stamps, and each form is going to print differently. Under the vendor copy, we can see it is currently blank, and that's because this is the form I'm going to use in my demonstration. In the form properties for this form stamp, in the overlay section, we can see this is set to print on copy one. So this overlay will only appear on my vendor copy. The same holds true for the file copy. Under the file copy, we can see this has already been created for us. Notice that on the main form, if I go into Properties and Overlay, <coughs> the Print on Copies is blank, but if I click the ellipses, we can see it's set to print on all copies. When creating multiple copies of a form stamp, it is easier to create the form in its entirety and then cut the pieces out that will be placed in a separate form. Notice that the bottom of 0PO main has my vendor copy information. I'll draw a box around all this to highlight it. Control X on my keyboard to cut. Go to my vendor copy and paste. By creating the form completely on one form, I can ensure that the information will print in the correct location. The next component we'll discuss is form director. A form director is where the completed form is distributed. If there is no form director, by default form fusion will print the job. Let's go to form fusion and take a look at form director. This is our form director screen. We have a list of the available directors on the left. We also have a drop-down where we can set up specific distribution rules for each copy. 
Each copy is unique and has no effect on the setup of any other copy. The default director is print director and the optional directors are imaging, which in banner is known as BDM, email and script. Print director is used to print the output to your printer. Imaging can be used in conjunction with banner document management or other imaging systems. Email director is used to send PDF emails and script can be used to execute a PLSQL script after the file is generated. Print director will be set to always by default and the other directors are set to never. These optional directors are discussed in more detail in the advanced training. The last component that we're going to discuss is map form. Map form is where the source file is mapped to variables that will be used in the form stamp. First we will decide what information will be static and what information will be dynamic. Static information will be mapped using floating fields and dynamic information will be mapped using offset fields. Let's go to Form Fusion and take a look at the map form. In map form we have some different icons in our toolbar. First, to zoom in in map form, we don't have the option of using the scroll wheel. We use these A's to zoom in and out. The small A will zoom the page out and the large A zoom in. The piece of paper with the binocular on top of it will fetch a sample input file. The grid with the A behind it, or the uh, A with the grid behind it rather. In map form, this allows us to create a floating field. The icon like the two dashed boxes this is going to be used to create our offset field. And the icon that uh, looks like a box with two tabs on it is for adding a header. A headers will be covered in the advanced form fusion training. So to import a source uh, file into form fusion, there are two steps that must occur prior to fetching the sample. First, you would need to run a PO in your source system, a banner or Genzabar for example. And next you would copy the file over to the system that is running FormFusion. These steps have been performed prior to this training. Let's import a sample of our source file. I can click on the binoculars with a piece of paper. Alternatively, I can right click on the form, sample file, and select load from file. I can navigate to the file I want to use. <coughs> and click open. Now we have the sample LIS that I selected. Notice the purple boxes on top of the text in map form. These are our floating fields. If I click on a floating field, it highlights the name in the floating field list. This is our vend address. And this would be our vend ID. I can use a floating field to map this text because it is static. I know it will always appear in the same location. Each piece of text that is mapped using a floating field will always print in the same position in the input file. Please note that by default, a floating field will include all white space and extra lines being mapped. So my vend address will map all the extra space to the right and below. This issue can be alleviated by modifying the properties of this field. To access the properties, I double click. I want to go to the mapping section and I would select auto trim spaces for mapped value which has already been selected. So I know this floating field will not capture extra white space. To move a field, you can click and drag into a new location or you can use the control points to resize. Notice that beneath the vend address there is another floating field. I know that this is the vend name. If we have one floating field on top of another, both fields will capture the same information. Or rather, both fields will capture the information. In this case, the vend name would capture the first line 
which has the vendor name in it. Vend address is going to capture that information, but also the other lines below. I can review now to make sure everything else is mapped correctly. I can see that my PO number is not mapping correctly, or rather it's mapping an extra space. I could trim the value off of that, or I can contract it down. If I need to add some additional information, for example, let's take this out, I can create a new floating field by drawing a box around it, give it a name, that was my carrier, because I had deleted the one called carrier already but not saved, it's not going to allow me to do that. Let's just call it underscore one for now to proceed with the training. And in case that's going to be bigger than the CF motor freight, I'll expand it. I can use this green arrow to move on to the second page of my input file information. Notice here that the PO number has actually shifted one space over. So I guess that extra space was necessary. Everything else appears to be OK. And everything is still capturing on page 3. Next we're going to discuss another type of variable, and that's our offset field. Notice that there are a number of offset fields already mapping specific amounts. These amounts don't appear on every page and they will move based on the number of items in the PO. Because of this, I cannot map these amounts with a floating field, because they're not static. I need to use an offset field. Offset fields work by searching for text, and then mapping text based on specifications. If I click the Discount Offset field, notice the floating fields are no longer visible. They have been replaced by a blue box, a red box, and four dashed dotted lines. To make changes to the offset field, I will need to go into the properties, and I can do that by double-clicking the name. The properties has four sections. General, where we can give it a name, a description, and the type of field the variable is. Search is what is going to be used to create the red box and the black dotted lines. Mapping is what creates our blue box. And additional actions determines how the selected text is handled. Here we can enter the text we're searching for. This creates the red box between the columns and rows, which create the dotted lines. This text box is where we would enter the text we're searching for. We're looking for the word discount with a colon at the end. This search is very specific and must contain the colon. However, it is not case sensitive, as you can see. We also have the option to trim any additional space before comparing by checking this box. Below that we have the between column and row parameters. These parameters are used to create the dotted lines that create a search area. The number corresponds to the row or column that the dotted line will be plotted on. Next, we need to define what text we're going to store in this variable. We do that in the mapping area. The column offset is going to be how many columns the blue box will move before it starts mapping. This number can be set to a positive or a negative, with a positive moving the number uh, the box sorry to the right, and a negative moving it to the left. The column width is going to be the width of the box. Row offset is going to be how many rows the blue box will move up or down before it starts mapping. This can also be set to a positive or a negative. A positive will move it down, and a negative would move it up. Row height is going to be the height of the blue box. Auto trim spaces for mapped value 
will automatically ignore any extra space that may be picked up by the offset field. Under additional actions, I can set what the offset field will do with the mapped text. Please note that offset fields are processed before floating fields. Any text removed here will not be mapped by your floating field. Do nothing would leave the text in the report. Remove selected text will remove the text being mapped, that's the blue box. Remove entire line will remove the search text, that's the red box, and also the mapped text, the blue box. And replace the selected text will replace the mapped text with whatever I place in this box. The discount field can now be printed anywhere we need it on our form. Although it does not need to be placed there, we may have mapped it simply to remove it. This brings us to the end of today's training. If you would like to learn more about Form Fusion features, um, please sign up for the advanced training through the eVisions website. Uh, some of the topics the advanced training covers are conditional printing, uh, how to use the optional directors, imaging, email and script, the implementation of headers, and how to place an intelligent barcode on a form to name but a few. Thank you everybody for attending and I hope you all have a good day. Goodbye.